So earlier this week, the NMHC released their weekly rent payment tracker report and found that 92.2% of apartment households paid either a full or partial rent payment by June 20th of this year, which represents the exact same percentage of renters who paid through June 20th a year prior. And this number is actually up slightly from the 90.8% of renters who had paid by May 20th of 2020, which could indicate a potential positive upswing in rental payments as things start to open up again and we head into the second half of the year. So with rental payments on the upswing and the economy slowly but surely restarting, does this mean that multifamily is in the clear? And if you're a multifamily investor, does this mean you missed your window of opportunity to buy the dip if you haven't bought a deal already? in 2020. Well, if you're working in multifamily, looking to acquire multifamily deals, or currently own multifamily and want to know what might be next in the space, make sure to stick around for this video. Hey, this is Justin from breaking to CRE.com. And if you're new here on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate financial analysis. So if you're looking to break into the industry or do your first real estate deal, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos as soon as they're released. So despite all the economic doom and gloom that has been perpetuated in the news lately, the past three months have painted a relatively stable picture in the multifamily space thus far. And compared to 2019, things have actually looked just slightly worse than business as usual in 2020, despite unemployment rising to the mid-teens and tens of millions of Americans across the country losing their jobs since mid-March. In fact, for multifamily owners, April shaped up to be a relatively normal month as far as property performance is concerned, with 94.6% of renters making a rent payment by the end of the month, just 3.1% below the 97.7% figure posted in April of 2019. And in the following month of May, 95.1% of renters paid a full or partial rent payment by May 31st, down just 1.5% from the 96.6% figure in May of 2019. But on the surface, this all just doesn't seem to add up, right? With so many job losses and economic turmoil going on right now that can't be ignored, how has this continued to happen and what does this mean for the future of multifamily in general? Well, first, let's talk about what might have contributed to this strong performance over the past three months in the first place. And the first thing is really the elephant in the room, and that is federal and state financial assistance. So millions of Americans received stimulus checks of $1,200 per person and $500 per qualifying child in April and May, which for many could have had a significant impact on the ability to pay rent payments by the end of the month. Millions of Americans who filed for unemployment have also been able to collect an extra $600 per week or $2,400 per month in federal unemployment benefits on top of what is currently being offered by their state. And for many American renters, especially those in lower cost of living areas, an extra $2,400 per month can go a long way in taking care of rent payments with the average multifamily rent in the US at an average rate of just over $1,700 per month. New deliveries of multifamily product have also stalled in many US markets, with the NMHC releasing survey data in April that found that 56% of multifamily developers surveyed were experiencing construction delays, 77% were experiencing delays in permitting, and 70% were experiencing delays in construction starts at that time. And this is compounding what was already a need for multifamily housing that wasn't being met, with the NMHC and National Apartment Association, or NAA, reporting just three years ago that the US would need 4.6 million new apartments by the year 2030, just to keep up with the growing demand for multifamily housing units. And meeting this demand would require 325,000 new units to be delivered each year, and the US hasn't come close to achieving that since the study was published. In fact, during the last decade, peak supply occurred in 2017, and only 282,000 units, or 87% of the targeted number, were delivered during that year, and that number of new deliveries hasn't been matched in a full year since. This is all to say that for many renters who are renters by necessity, which makes up a large portion of the US renter population, there simply aren't enough options out there right now to ease price pressure in the market. And unlike retail or office where consumers and business owners can just choose to not shop or to work from home, people need to live somewhere. And unless renters plan to move in with friends or family members, rent is likely one of the first 
if not the first expense to prioritize when jobs are lost and people are strapped for cash. And residents valuing their living spaces has also been shown by turnover decreasing to levels we haven't seen in decades. In fact, the national turnover rate dropped from 47.5% in April of 2019 to just 42.1% in April of 2020, according to CBRE, which was the lowest level on record in over 20 years. And this is likely a result of fewer renters wanting to move right now, a decreased ability to pay for moving costs or a security deposit on a new unit, and a lack of major rent increases on renewals right now from apartment owners looking to preserve occupancy during this time. Would-be homeowners are also having a tough time right now with more stringent mortgage qualifications and surging buyer demand fueled by historically low interest rates and pent up demand from buyers who would have been searching for homes during the spring months and weren't able to due to all of the closures and shutdowns. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association or MBA, total loan application volume jumped 8% in just the last week from the week prior and the purchase index was up 21% year over year, representing the ninth week of increased purchase mortgage applications, which represents the highest level of activity since early 2009. So overall, with rents being paid on time and turnover at historic lows, what does this mean for multifamily investors and what might happen going forward? Well, the first thing and what many are calling a looming income cliff is that the additional $600 per week in federal unemployment benefits are slated to end on July 31st, which could have a major negative impact on the ability for renters to pay rent over the next few months. For many, job losses have spanned three months or more at this point, and savings accounts for Americans living paycheck to paycheck have likely dried up outside of federal or state assistance. Now again, housing does seem to be very high on the priority list for payments, but many Americans could have a much harder time paying for rent if some additional assistance measures aren't passed in the coming months, which could mean a decrease in overall collections for multifamily owners and a decrease in revenue at multifamily properties as a result. Now, aside from government assistance drying up, a significant decrease in turnover also likely means that the business plans of many multifamily value add investors have been derailed with renovations unable to be completed and planned rent increases as a result of those renovations put on pause indefinitely. So like we talked about in last week's video, any sort of hiccup in planned rent growth within a pro forma can cause major misses in return projections on deals, especially when those occur early on in the ownership period. And as a result of that, we could see a significant amount of multifamily investors who acquired properties in 2019 and early 2020 falling short on IRR and equity multiple projections, especially for those that went into those acquisitions with a heavy value add business plan or a short term hold horizon on the deal. And finally, on a positive note this time, a decrease in turnover will also decrease associated turnover and make ready costs for multifamily investors, giving a slight boost to NOI at a time when it's likely really needed. Turnover costs for individual units when a resident moves out can often run up to $1,000 even for units without a major renovation planned. So dropping that cost by even 10 to 20% across an entire property can cause a significant positive swing in NOI and subsequent value if those costs are reduced. So now that we've covered the good news and the bad news, if you're a multifamily investor, what can you do with this information and what does this mean for the long term? Well, first, I sound like a broken record on this channel saying this, but demand fundamentals for multifamily came into this recession strong and will likely continue to be strong as we work towards an economic recovery over the next few years. In the short term, we might see a slight decrease in demand for apartment units, but that's not likely to have a major lasting impact on long-term demand for rental housing. And if you couple this with the increased difficulty to build and deliver new product right now, this only furthers the supply and demand imbalance that exists in multifamily housing today. Now, second, multifamily performance continues to be strong. And even if opportunities are coming, they likely aren't here yet and won't come until the fall or winter months. Again, I've said this over the past few months on this channel for many different product types, but for multifamily specifically, this is especially proving to be the case. Collections are still strong across the US and Q3 will likely be the test if owners are going to struggle and collections will start to slip in the multifamily space. 
At that point, government assistance programs will have started to dry up and we'll be able to see how much of an effect this is actually having on the rental market and if this assistance has been artificially propping up payments in the spring and summer months. And third, like we've talked about as well, low interest rates are really propping up property values right now, even in the middle of all of this uncertainty around what might happen next in the multifamily housing market. And even assuming very modest rent growth, many investors can still underwrite to targeted return metrics by placing long-term debt on new acquisitions at sub 3% interest rates right now in some cases. Some investors are even able to secure full-term interest-only payments for five to 10 year loan terms, which is also producing strong cash on cash returns, even for properties that are trading at a 4.75 or 5% going in cap rate. So with all of that said, without seeing widespread distress in the market right now, there are still many groups trying to put out capital and looking to take advantage of low interest rates, which has prevented prices from adjusting and has prevented values from dropping significantly in the space. This means that if you're a multifamily investor looking for discounted pricing and to pick up cheap properties as a result of our current economic situation, unfortunately, it looks like you'll have to continue being patient at least until the third quarter of this year before any sort of outsized acquisition opportunities begin to present themselves on a larger scale. And if you are looking to take advantage of multifamily opportunities that might come up later this year and want to be prepared when that time comes, I'd highly recommend checking out my course, The Complete Guide to Multifamily Real Estate Investing, which walks through multifamily acquisition analysis in detail and also includes a valuation case study at the end of the course using a full acquisition underwriting model. And I'll link that in the description below. And as always, if you want access to all Break-In SCRE courses, all models and some additional one-on-one -on -one email support from me directly, check out Breaking to CRE Academy and I'll link that in the description as well. Also, I love hearing from you guys and getting your input and seeing what you're seeing in your markets. So make sure to leave a comment and let me know where you're seeing multifamily rents trending in your area and what you're seeing as far as transaction activity is concerned. Now, if you like this video and wanna see more content like this, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel and share this with anyone else you think might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.